what I most liked, loved about school was the actual learning. But what I dislike, I was bullied quite a lot for different reasons. And so the bullying um, made school days really hard. And a lot of, I don't have good memories. And I was bullied for being overweight, for wearing glasses. Um, we were pretty poor. So I had um, like secondhand uniforms. And I can't believe they did this to kids that they would have dinner tickets. So if you paid, you had this green ticket. But if you couldn't afford it, and there was a few of us that couldn't, you had these green tickets with red, red stripes and you had to stand in a different queue. So we were bullied for that as well. So school days are mixed, but um, I had the thirst for um, learning. And, you know, I remember one or two teachers that were really supportive. So a mixture. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I would put school into two different categories. Um, my primary and my secondary. So what did I like about primary school? I was probably a little bit oblivious. I found school easy. So I just, I, I didn't really have to think about it. I just turned up and sat down, took it in and that's it. In a way I was, um, the sort of academic stuff was, was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And we played at, time mm -hmm. um, and that was okay um, and I was five minutes from school and just went up and down the road on my own and that was okay so everything about primary didn't really feel in any way like an anxiety provoking experience in any way whatsoever other than I didn't ever have school lunches and I didn't know where they were so I guess there was a part of me who likes to be prepared thinking if ever I had to do that I wouldn't know where it was and it was somewhere around the back and I didn't ever go there um, because I just lived five minutes away and my mum didn't work. So, And then we went up to the high school, the grammar school. Um, <clears throat> and my friend said that somebody she knew who was ahead of us said, you don't play there. And well, what do you do? What do you do at break? Um, but you don't play. It's interesting. And there was this sudden change from being really a, a child to a not child um, and we streamed five primaries into the grammar and I would think that our primary was the babiest, the most innocent because I got there and looked around me at my peers and thought oh heavens look, look what they're doing. So that, that created a bit of a, let me think what word are we going to use? Um, a little bit of a pressure, maybe, because I didn't know how to fit in. And I wasn't with my friends from primary because we got A, split alphabetically first. And then after year one, we got split academically. Um, so another change. So it's quite, a, if you think over a couple of years, now that I look back, what a lot of unsettled transitioning was going on. Um and, you know, I could meet my friend after school because she was at the other end of the alphabet and in the next band down. So I, and that was okay, but it was just... I still found the academic part easy peasy. I wasn't particularly um, focused because I was too busy looking sideways and checking what everybody else was doing. And I hadn't had to do that in primary. And, and finding me lacking isn't that interesting. I found me lacking. That they were much more streetwise. I, I had no idea what anything really meant and how things worked. And um, and I'm smiling because the sort of one real positive was when this uh, really up-to-date girl said, and she was... You know, dressed to the nines and um, not not school uniform and uh, makeup on and everything like that. She looked really trendy and she says, who does your eyebrows? I'm like, nobody. 
She's only natural. Okay. Well, they're fab. And that was the first time I ever really got a compliment. And it's you can tell and I'm still remembering this from like 50 years ago or something. Um more than 50. My eyebrows, you know. It's like they just were. They just they were just there. What was that about? But suddenly somebody saw something, you know. But yeah, th th there was a, an awful, for me, pressure caused by me um, to see how, what did I need to do to fit in around here? I made a few big mistakes and, um, yeah, it, it, it was, it was, it wasn't as bad as I hear kids have it these days, I don't think. But I've got a tiny flavour, I think, of what some of the kids might be going through. Um, I was bullied. I had to run away at one point. A couple of times I had to run away or I might have got duffed up. That's not nice. Like, that's not nice even for your inner self to face the coward that I thought I was and I didn't like. Oh, yeah, deep shame. Um, yeah, that was pretty hor horrific. Didn't get duffed up because I ran, which in, in hindsight was quite smart, but at the time I, I was more upset at not being brave enough to stand and fight them off. Yeah. So if that's what kids are up against these days, my heart goes out to them, really. I was lucky that I learned well. <clears throat> so was always, you know, the, the papers would come round and I was always up there in the, in the high marks until the last year when... I didn't hear him properly when he said, and you'll be asked five questions. So I only studied five parts and drastically failed that subject. Uh, I wasn't used to failing, but you know what, I didn't care. We, um, we, were, we also ended up being homeless when I was 15. Um, just circumstances with my dad's work. So um, I was probably coming up to 16. <clears throat> so if you think about that, like, you know, pack up all your stuff, move in with somebody else just at the point of doing exams and stuff like that. And you know what, Cassie? When I think about it at the time, I skated right through all of that. So that, that part of me that's quite pragmatic goes, okay, so I get my school bag, I put my jacket on, I'm going to school from this house. And when I come home at lunch, I'm going to that house. And just got on with it. But when I really think about it, as with all that I now know, and think, no attention whatsoever on the fact that I lost my home that I'd had for 10 years, overcrowding at my granny's, um, and then decanted from her house to another house while her house got upgraded and then back again and back and forward, back and forward. Um, and then left, just left school and had to start working because we had to earn money. When I, when I went to school with Amy to, to get the chat about what's it like coming to Mossabara Grammar as she was transitioning, I sat there in trance listening to this man and thinking, oh my, I wish I could come back and redo these four or even five or even six years with the appetite I have now for learning. Oh, wow, wouldn't that be wonderful? So they give us education at the wrong time. That's my conclusion. Um, well, firstly, um, uh, I'll start with the likes because there's more likes than dislikes. I absolutely love school. <laughs> I loved all of my school years. Um, and, and I feel really, um, grateful for that because I do hear, um, a lot of people saying the opposite. Um, so why, why did I, 
love school so much. I, I, I just have a love for learning. Um, a love for, yeah, a love for not 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 factual knowledge. I have to say, it's it's learning about myself. So I think I saw school not just about learning facts and regurgitating facts for exams, but I was constantly learning about myself. So it 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 was how I interacted with my teachers. I loved that aspect of um, education, how I interacted with my peers. I loved that aspect about education. It was, you know, you were connecting with people all the time. And, um, oh, yeah, I just, I just, I just felt so much joy about that. Um, I don't really recall having much time off school even when I was unwell I was in school um we I went to so my primary school um from a very young age uh the teachers that um taught me saw my artistic talent and nurtured it so I felt this um connection um, to the place where where I was educated and I was always encouraged to express myself through my art and like the head teacher would ask me if I would paint a picture for his office or um, the one of the teachers would ask if I would um, get involved with painting the scenery for the school play and and I you know it, it was there was all of that there was all of the, the the primary school was very into the arts and the performing arts so um you know i'd always get involved in the annual school play um i was a team captain when when i was old enough to be a team captain and i just loved i loved um i loved the what the connection that that brought um with being a team captain and and looking out for other people and yeah I, I like that um uh they said I went to a secondary modern school so there was I love the the opportunity to do needlework cooking woodwork metalwork pottery childcare all of that aspect of learning so I had that there was that but there was also the academic side as well and um I just felt it was quite a holistic um approach to learning because as well as that I also had my friendships and connections with people and teachers that I really just felt a lot of love for um what I didn't like <laughs> I really, 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 really did not like maths. <laughs> uh, I didn't understand it. Um, I had a lot of fear when I went into a maths lesson because um, everything mm, I didn't understand the abstract nature of maths. Um, I, I, I felt a lot of um, resistance up, it, up in my head when it came to mental arithmetic. Um, I couldn't, I just couldn't keep up. I couldn't work out things in my head. I needed to have things on paper in front of me. So um, I felt a lot of anxiety uh, going into maths lessons because I was telling myself I'm a failure at this. And um, that was that was reflected probably uh, throughout my time at high school in maths. It never came as a problem at primary school, only at secondary school. And it wasn't until I um, was I asked to move down a set, and I and I worked with a teacher who seemed to have a more um, seem to understand that some children aren't able to um understand the abstract nature of maths and made it a lot more 
accessible for me, that that fear and anxiety went away. <laughs> but I do remember not liking that aspect. Um, <laughs> and there's a funny story, actually, about the maths. Uh, I think it was in my second or third year at um, high school. I was in a maths lesson, still not enjoying maths at all, still not in understanding it. And this was like a top math set. And um, I was sat at a desk and I had a ruler in my hand that I was bending because I was anxious, right? And I just happened to have a rubber in my hand as well at the end of the ruler that I was bending. And I let I, the ruler slipped and the rubber went flying through the air <laughs> and hit the maths teacher on her nose. And of course, she thought that I was doing this deliberately because, because I was no good at maths. She knew I wasn't any good at maths. I was struggling and I was I was rebelling against that. And I she she made a comment um, um <laughs> which was a little bit like the comment that I received in the previous question. Um and consequently I would move down a set. Um which I, I I felt I felt relief about, and actually I felt disinterest in her in her comment at the time, because I think I'd probably got to a point in my maths lessons where you know what I don't give a fuck <laughs> what happens because I'm not understanding this all this work that I've been doing this year none of it's gone in you know um, and I think I think it was very symbolic uh, what happened. <laughs> I think it was divine intervention. <laughs> it was the hand of God. It wasn't me. <laughs> oh, dear. So, um, no, I don't think there was any uh, animosity between myself and the teacher. I think we both kind of accepted <laughs> the fact that things needed to change. <laughs> that was their way of instigating the change. But, yeah, um, it was the maths that was my biggest uh, fear at school. <laughs>